What's up everybody, Dr. Rossi, strengthsandsneakers.com. I want to talk about a medication that I feel is misunderstood in psychiatry and its uses often get questioned by influencers like Joe Rogan. So that medication is aripiprazole, also known as Abilify, and it's not your typical dopamine blocking medication. So aripiprazole, from a very basic standpoint, is a serotonin dopamine receptor partial agonist. Now that's a complicated term, this idea of what is a partial agonist, and we're going to explain each one of those pieces here in the video, but that's the basis to kind of think about is that that's very different than other medications we talked about that are pure dopamine blocking medications or antagonists, right? Very different concept. So let's start with the approvals for this medication. What has it been FDA approved for? And it's been approved for a lot of different things. It's been approved for schizophrenia. It's been approved for acute mania and mixed mania. It's been approved for bipolar maintenance. It's been approved for as an adjunctive treatment for major depressive disorder. It's been approved for autism related irritability. It's been approved for Tourette's disorder. It's been approved for acute agitation and schizophrenia and or bipolar disorder in the intramuscular form. That's a lot of stuff. The FDA seems to really like this medication. They've approved it for majority of the major bread and butter psychiatric disorders. And again, I said this is a very unique mechanism. And it's unique in the sense that we're talking about partial dopamine agonists, right? At D2 receptors specifically. So how does so how does that work and what does that mean? So theoretically, if we're looking at the neuroscience of this stuff, and understand that there is a mind-brain discontinuity that we have yet to be able to understand fully, right? There's a difference between the biological components of the brain and the mind, which are separate things. So we'll talk about that more in a, in a future video. But understanding that these things are theoretical, right? This is theoretically the way it works. So what would happen if we had an example of somebody who has a diagnosis of schizophrenia, let's say, and we believe that this is a disease of dopamine excess, right? The person with schizophrenia has too much dopamine, so we need to either reduce the dopamine by blocking these receptors and preventing the dopamine from binding, or we need to modulate those dopamine receptors in some way. And that's where aripiprazole or Abilify comes into play. It's going to sort of modulate those D2 receptors. It's going to block them in the cases of someone with dopamine excess, and somebody with low dopamine, say somebody with a depressive disorder, they're going to theoretically have an increase in mood because it's going to be stimulating those dopamine receptors. So this is sort of the idea behind it. In cases of dopamine excess, like schizophrenia, it's going to block D2 receptors. In cases of less dopamine production or output, it's going to actually stimulate those receptors and potentially improve some of the mood symptoms. And obviously, if you're blocking D2 receptors, you're going to get you're going to get some benefit for the positive symptoms of something like schizophrenia, such as hallucinations. And we see that, like I said, with the mood symptoms as well. If we're enhancing dopamine production, we'll have improvements in cognitive function, improvement in the negative symptoms of schizophrenia, as well as mood symptoms. So that's where the idea of adjuncting of this medication, using this medication as an adjunct with other antidepressant medications if you're not getting the full benefit of a particular antidepressant medication. So it's going to enhance that medication's ability to help treat mood symptoms. There's a bunch of other receptors too, and a lot of these drugs actually hit other receptors besides dopamine receptors. Sometimes we think about it too black and white, but there's all these other receptors that are being stimulated or blocked as well by a lot of these medications. One in particular I'll mention here is that there has been some associated activity at D3 receptors. Now, D3 receptors are unique because there's another medication that acts as a partial agonist that's much newer called cariprazine, that will, or Vralar, also known as Vralar, that acts at D3 receptors primarily. So that's another topic for another video, but just keep that in mind that this D3 activity can help, obviously, not only with symptoms, you know, symptoms of psychosis, let's say, but also potentially depressive symptoms. There's partial agonism at serotonin 1A receptors, which again may help with the mood symptoms. There's blockade at 5-HT 
or serotonin 5-HT2A receptors, which can increase dopamine in certain parts of the brain. This is very common with other uh, dopamine blocking medications. And there's also blockade at 5-HT2C and 5-HT7 receptors, which we think may contribute to some of the antidepressant effects as well. So lots of receptors getting hit. It's not just D2. So what we see ultimately, to wrap this video up, is that with aripiprazole, you get about 60% dopamine blockade. And what I mean by that is, let's say like you're getting a 90% dopamine blockade and you're getting, um, say, 30% agonism right, 30% activation at these receptors. When you kind of average that out, it works out to about 60%, right, about 60%. And there's another medication that's very, very similar to aripiprazole. It's called Rexpiprazole or Rexalti. It's a newer medication. You might have heard of it. And this one actually has even less, less blockade at dopamine D2 receptors. It's about 20% when you average it out. And ultimately, as you might imagine, that might worsen psychosis. So for somebody who's dealing with, say, schizophrenia, this may not be the best option. And, and ultimately, that is a lot of what we see clinically, is that Braxpiprazole is much better used as an adjunct for depressive disorders. So I want to cut the video there. Uh, if you guys have questions about the mechanism, if anything else comes up, we want to talk about the side effects of these medications, I would be happy to do it. Please drop a comment below and like and subscribe to the channel for more content.